Hello friends, I recently made my January TBR, which I'll leave a link to in the cards above if you'd like to see how I put that together. But one thing I noticed was that there was an awful lot of what I would consider cozy fantasy. And I thought we could have a cozy good time and read these books together. So these are the books that I'm gonna be reading in this vlog. The first is of course, Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. I couldn't have a cozy fantasy reading vlog and not read Legends and Lattes. This is like the quintessential cozy fantasy at the moment. And I'm so excited to finally get to it. We're reading this for my Blossom Book Club over on my Patreon for the month of January, and I can't wait. This is billed as a novel of high fantasy and low stakes. And from what I know, this is about a warrior orc who retires and decides to open up her own cafe. A hot cup of fantasy slice of life with a dollop of romantic froth. Next, we have the first in the series, and this is The Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels by India Holton. This I think is more of a romance but it definitely has fantasy elements. I think it's about pirates. The blurb says Bridgerton meets Peaky Blinders in this swashbuckling tale of scoundrels and society, crime and crumpets, as these enemies turn to allies and might just fall in love along the way. So I mean Bridgerton is Regency era but this says Victorian lady society so historical fiction with fantasy pirates but also it's romance. I can't think of anything much more cozy than that. Then for something a little bit different is Natsume's Book of Friends. This is a really sweet sort of like parent normal fantasy slice of life manga that I've just fallen head over heels in love with. I'm up to volume five so we'll be reading volume five together. This is kind of like standalone in terms of the chapters though like it's written so that you could kind of start anywhere but basically the idea is that Natsume our main character he can see yokai which are these like spirits and like it's just about his interactions with them and it's just really sweet. I love it and to me this is absolutely a very cozy comfy kind of read so I had to include it in this video. And this next one I don't know that everybody would class as cozy per se but it is a very comfy fun read and that is the Lady Trent memoirs by Marie Brennan. I'm up to the fourth book which is this one In the Labyrinth of the Drakes. Again this has the historical setting of something that feels very much like Victorian England although it is a fantasy world where dragons exist. And our main character Isabella Trent is basically like a real person in this world who has become the foremost expert on dragons despite being a woman. You know, someone who should be getting married and having children and not much more. Instead, she traveled the world and studied dragons and was just obsessed with them. And so this is her retelling her life story from the perspective of her as an older woman. These are her memoirs and they're just so fun. I'm really looking forward to having a cozy fun time with all of these reads, so let's dive right in. Okay, so we are one day and one book down. I've just read volume five of Natsume's Book of Friends and this has to be my favorite volume so far. I loved it. So as I mentioned, Natsume's Book of Friends is this kind of like serialized story about this teenage boy who can see yokai. His grandmother could also see yokai, but she didn't like them very much and she managed to trick a lot of them into signing their names in her book of friends, which meant that because she had their name, she had control over them. And Natsume has since inherited this book, but he feels very differently about yokai. I mean, they've caused him quite a lot of trouble in his life, but he also has a lot of compassion and understanding for them. And he's learning to appreciate this gift he has for seeing them. So a lot of the stories are about him returning their name so that they have control over their lives again. Some of the stories though feature yokai who are just a lot more aggressive and dangerous. And in this volume, we actually got, I think the first chapters that actually sort of like are a story over multiple chapters. All of the other chapters from memory that I've read are very like succinct and you could almost read them as standalones outside of having read the whole series. And I really liked that. I liked that we got a little bit more time with these characters and with this story. Because in this volume, Natsume makes a really important and what develops into a close friendship, which was beautiful to see. He's a boy who's kind of like isolated himself quite a lot because of this gift that he has. In this story, he meets a girl who is a little bit sensitive to yokai, but she can't usually see them herself. But she's come up with this spell where under the right conditions, she can see them. And she's accidentally sort of got herself embroiled with this very dangerous yokai who is threatening to kill people. Having said that out loud, it doesn't sound very cozy, but trust me, the vibe overall is very sweet and atmospheric and wholesome. Like it has a very cozy feeling. And of course, watching Natsume like sort of open up and become a little bit more vulnerable and connecting with someone was cozy and sweet as hell. And of course, anything that has a talking cat, I feel like automatically qualifies as cozy. And like this has the ultimate 
talking cat. So this is one of those cozy stories that is not without stakes, but everything is resolved pretty quickly. Um, and ultimately it, it has a lot of heart to it that I think gives it a very cozy kind of feeling overall. Anyway, I love Natsume. I love this series. I already knew that, but this volume has kind of like sealed the deal for this becoming an all time favorite manga series for me, maybe. So a great start to this vlog. I think next though, I'm feeling some pirate romance. So the Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels is bonkers. I had a lot of fun, even though I don't know that I loved it. How do I even talk about this? I, I honestly don't even know. We'll start with the fact that this is set in like a Victorian era and it's kind of like a camped up version of that. <laughs> I think that's where the Bridgerton comparison from the blurb comes from. The Lady Scoundrel Society is basically a lady society of pirates. Most of them are these older women who have been like pirating and stealing and like conning people their entire lives. But they don't have ships. Instead, they have flying houses. Yep, the houses can just like up and fly around wherever they want and like I mean some of them aren't very good drivers so they land on top of other houses. <laughs> Our main character Cecilia is a younger woman who's living with her aunt who is one of these lady scoundrels and she has a big dream of finally like graduating and being accepted fully into this society as like an official member. And at the beginning of the book, we discovered that a man named Ned has been paid to assassinate her. And she is actually thrilled about this because basically she figures being assigned her first assassin is just gonna give her so much clout with the lady scoundrels. But it's clear very early on that there are some strong sparks between this man, Ned, and Cecilia. And so it is just this bonkers ride of like this assassin trying to kill Cecilia, but to do it in a polite way because she is a lady after all. But then also a bunch of terrible things happening to the lady scoundrels and Cecilia having to try and like rescue them while also simultaneously fending off and trying not to fall in love with her assassin. Like bonkers, bonkers is the best word for this. It's absolutely wacky and I will not ever describe this as one of my favorite books. I will however describe this as an awful lot of fun. I think it's the tone and the narration in particular that I really enjoyed. The kind of juxtaposition between these like actual pirates, but also them all being Victorian ladies. It was just a hilarious sort of clashing. I loved it. And I think the thing that made this work for me is the fact that the author like committed to the bit. She did not half ass the society of lady pirates with flying houses, you know, she committed, she went there. And everything about it is just really ridiculous and fun and playful. I don't know that it would technically be classed as cozy fantasy. To me, this feels much more like a romance book with like ridiculous fantasy elements. And on top of that, it's pretty fast paced and hectic for a cozy. But if we reframe it for a fun fantasy, I think I think this could qualify. So while this is not some grand piece of literature that's gonna change my life, or that honestly I'll probably remember a few years from now, it was an awful lot of fun. It was great entertainment. Also, I'm gonna give some like very vague spoilers, but one of my favorite things was the fact that the big bad is basically like a grumpy incel throwing a tantrum because he can't be accepted into the Lady Scoundrel Society. In a lot of ways, this book spends an awful lot of time basically just making fun of the patriarchy and I was here for that. And although I did really like like the tension and the angst and like the chemistry between our two love interests, I didn't like their sexual relationship very much. One of my things that I don't really love is when one of the people in the relationship, especially a woman, and especially when it's set in historical settings, I feel like it's quite common for her to just be like so innocent, like absolutely clueless, no idea innocent. Like I just, to me, that's not sexy or cute. It's just kind of weird. But anyway, aside from that, I just thought this was a lot of fun. It was a good time. I don't think this will be for everybody. I think the particular kind of humor and the tone I think some people will just like read about flying pirate houses and just like absolutely tap out. But if you are willing to just like have a wild ride with this ridiculous story, I think you could be in for some fun. I don't know that this has made me want to continue on with the series. I think there's three books out so far. Like I had a really good time, but do I need more of this in my life? I don't know. I finished The Labyrinth of Drakes by Marie Brennan last night and Oh, this is what a five star feels like. As I mentioned, this is book four in the Lady Trent memoir series by Marie Brennan. This is a series I've just been consistently really enjoying. I think I've given four stars to the first three books. I've really been enjoying this series. It's one that like, feels like it's greater than the sum of its parts to me. 
but this book was really something special. By far this is my favourite book of the series so far. Obviously it's a little bit hard to talk about without spoiling what has come before, but essentially each one of these books follows a particular expedition that Lady Trent has been on in her pursuit of science and learning more about dragons. I think in this one Isabella is about like, I don't know, early 30s, mid 30s, and she and her like science partner Tom get sent off to a land called Archaea by the Skeelan military and their mission, their project, is to learn how to breed dragons. There are reasons for that that I won't go into because that sort of spoils some of the discoveries in earlier books, uh, but it's kind of like one of those situations that is a bit of like an internal conflict for Isabella. And obviously she doesn't really like the idea of working for or with the military, uh, but she can see that there's a lot to be gained in this situation. But she also hopes that she'll be able to steer the direction of the project in a way that will be most beneficial or at least least harmful to the dragons involved. I know some people felt like, especially in the first book, like for a book about dragons, the dragons weren't very present. In this book they are. And we're getting very down and dirty with like the science of how these creatures breed and how they live and how they interact. While some of it is a bit unpleasant to read, especially sort of like reading about the captivity of dragons and things like that, I personally really like the way that this series and Isabella, our narrator, are willing to sort of grapple with those more morally grey kind of scenarios. Anyway, there's some sabotage and some betrayal and just like some interesting politics going on as there usually is in these books as well like kind of there's the dragons and then Isabella has to deal with all the other stuff as well. Also and I hope this won't spoil it too much but there is a character from book three who I loved that we do get to see again and I absolutely love the character development and the relationship development in this book and just more generally we can see how Tom and Isabella how their legacy as dragon naturalists are really starting to be elevated and starting to be formed and overall I just love this installment it's by far my favorite so far I loved it I loved it I loved it. And I know it's quite superficial but I just love these covers. They're some of my favourite covers especially in that sort of fantasy realm. They're just really unique and as ever Kate Redding's narration of the audiobook was delightful. All round a top tier experience. This is quickly becoming maybe my favourite fantasy series. I love it so much. And I'm feeling pumped to get into Legends and Lattes. This is a book that's been on my shelf for so long and that I just have such good feelings about. I can't wait to get stuck in. finished Legends and Lattes and I am honestly really surprised by my experience of this. I didn't love it. This has been one of those books that I've been highly anticipating for quite a long time and I genuinely thought it was going to be a new favourite, which is one of the reasons I left it to last in this video because I was just convinced I was going to love it. Now before you start catastrophizing, I did not hate this book. It was just like very middle of the road, mediocre, like three stars. Like this is quintessentially a three star book for me. It was cute. I liked the characters, I liked the ending, but it just didn't really do anything for me. At the end of the day I just really found myself wanting more from it and I don't necessarily mean that I wanted higher stakes, I quite enjoyed the cosy laid back kind of atmosphere and it's not like this book was entirely without stakes, like we had an antagonist, we had some betrayal, we had some interesting things happen, but I don't know it just didn't move me, it didn't hit me, it didn't sweep me away. I think I wanted more in terms of the interactions between the characters, I feel like so much of this book is hinging on that, it's hinging on the atmosphere of the coffee shop and on the relationships. And while I enjoyed the relationships, I liked them, I just felt like there was opportunity for more depth more connection. And although that is true of all of the relationships, that is especially true for the romance in this. Like when I hear people describe this as a sapphic story, I felt like the sapphic relationship was going to be like much more present. And I don't mean that I wanted it to turn into some like romance erotica, but I just wanted a little bit more between them. My favourite part was the ending. I liked the way that certain things wrapped up, especially with the coffee shop and the workers. I thought that was quite sweet. But I suppose at the end of the day, because I wasn't really swept up in these relationships and I wasn't really like overcome with emotion, it just didn't hit me in the way that I was expecting it to. So sweet, but underwhelming is how I would describe my experience overall. So despite the slightly disappointing ending, I feel like this has to be one of the most successful reading vlogs I've ever done. I had two five stars. That's a 50% five star hit ratio. That's incredible. I wish my five star hit rate was that good all the time. Can you imagine? And it's funny that both of these five star reads are parts of series that I've already been enjoying, but both of these books have been my favorite in those series so far and have kind of like elevated the entire series in my mind to potential favorite status. Like I low-key knew both of these series had the potential to be favorites for me and I feel like you've just witnessed it happen in real time. The Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels was absolutely 
wild. There's no other way to say it. I honestly have not found myself thinking much about this since, and I don't even know if I want to continue on with the series, even though I do already have book two. This is like the definition of a book that is here for a good time, not a long time, you know what I mean? It was fun and it was ridiculous, but it doesn't really have any staying power for me. And while I'm glad that I finally did get around to Legends and Lattes, and I am really looking forward to hearing what my folks over on my Patreon book club had to say about their experience of it. And like a three star read is not a bad reading experience. It's just, I really thought that this was going to be minimum four star, like minimum a really, really good read for me. And it was just fine. It was just okay. So it's hard to rank these exactly. I do feel like I've had two far and away successes and two just like good time reads, but like this would be my order. I think Labyrinth of the Drakes was my favorite, uh, then volume five of Natsume. Wisteria Lady Society, like I was not bored for a single second, so you gotta give it points for that. And then Legends and Lattes, kind of like the quintessential cozy book. It's sweet and it is cozy, but it's not particularly special to me. It's fun seeing these more cozy, lighthearted stories in all kinds of genre, whether it's mysteries or fantasy or whatever else, become more and more a thing. I think for so long, especially fantasy has been in the grips of grimdark. And I don't know, it's kind of nice to just enjoy something a little bit more lighthearted and sweet. If you've been reading some cozy fantasies, I'd love to hear in the comments below what your favorites have been so far. A big thank you to my wonderful patrons over on Patreon for their very generous support. And especially a big thank you goes to Livia, Lynette Brown, and Marie. And thank you if you've made it all the way to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed. I will talk to you in the comments and in the next video. Until then, happy reading. Bye!